Okay. okay. Right, so you've just started this, you're getting like a thousand views. How do you take that um, to the point that you're, you're gaining true... Uh, have you read the article, 1,000 True Fans? 100%, okay, that's your reading assignment. And for anyone else, beautiful article. You literally just Google 1,000 True Fans after this. I'll give you a very quick summary, but you can watch it, uh, you can read it in full. The idea is that you don't actually care about like the million subscribers because the subscriber number is worthless, right? There's many channels which have got millions of sus subscribers and they're all dead, they're broke, it doesn't matter. The idea is that what you actually want is true fans. What you want is like this invisible metric, which, you know, it's not in any number, but it's in just in the hearts of people around the world who literally think like, damn, this guy's helped me so much, I can't wait till he posts. They're the people who will buy, not the subscribers, but the true fans. Issue is true fans, there's no number for it. You know, we're obsessed with followers, with views. True fans, there can't be a metric for it. So it's like, what do you go for? Do you go for the vanity metrics of the followers and, li and likes and views? Or do you go for the thing that would actually make you money and probably have a bigger impact? I, nine times out of 10, the, the true fan thing is probably better off. The idea is to be as authentic as you possibly can, which means to show like 100% of the real you. That means your real genuine desires, your real genuine fears and hopes and dreams and you know your stumbles and your mistakes. These things make you appear human. And the more that you show off yourself, the more that people will connect with you. You mentioned self-help, so I'll give you a tip. You know you're producing the right videos when you're fucking scared of posting them. When you think, okay, shit, my family might see this. My friends might see this. People in the future might see this. When you're thinking those kinds of thoughts, that's when you know that you've posted the right kind of video. Yeah, there's, I mean, bro, there's going to be someone who always chats shit, first of all, right? They'll say it to you, 16-year-old kid. They'll say it to a 60-year-old guy. Oh, you're 60-year-old, right? So first of all, no one's free right. from criticism anyway. But specifically with like, okay, you're, you're young. Maybe you don't have as much experience. The way you just talk is you just talk about what's helped you so far. So this is something I try and like clarify. The way I talk on YouTube, one, it's a little bit probably too arrogant even for me, but two, not to sound like egotistical, but like I have done this for a very long time. I went to the gym consistently for about 10 years now, if you imagine that bro, right? That means I've been going to the gym since you were about six years old. Think about that. So now when I speak about the gym, it's like, okay, fair enough, he's got some authority, you know? that lets me speak in a way of like, okay, this is what you do to go to the gym. Let's say you've been going to the gym for like six months. You maybe shouldn't be speaking in like Andrew Tate mode, Hamza mode, where you're saying, okay, get, get, get your ass into the gym, do this, do this, do this. Instead, what's maybe better is saying, okay, I did this. I got my ass in the gym. I felt way better. Alex Amosi says this, which is beautiful. He says, don't say how to, say how I. No one can discredit you when you just talk about your own experience, how I, no one's going to say like, oh, well, you, you, you know what I mean? Like, I, I doubt you ate that many grams of protein, bro. We got, mm, yeah, should you niche down? After a very long time, that was like the meta to niche down, to be this fitness YouTuber who talks about the carnivore diets or to be this tech guy who refuse the newest iPhones, for example. Everyone would come to you because they want the same thing. That meta has gone now, like the game of YouTube has changed. It's no longer about being in a niche, it's about you as a person. And so if you try and put yourself into a niche of like, okay, I'll just make fitness videos and I'll make them you know, super specific, this niche, this perfect niche that maybe I can dominate, you probably won't gain much success these days because people don't really watch the niche these days. You know what I mean? Like how, when was the last time that you've watched like a back pain YouTuber and you watched every video of it. You know what I mean? It's like, if there's something you need to search, like for example, a tech guide, you watch it, you quickly watch it, and then you never watch that guy again. You don't need to, right? These days, the person you watch, it's not really just for the niche, it's for the person. There's hundreds of self-improvement guys. You're not just watching videos on sleep. You prefer to watch them from me, or from Huberman, or from like, you know, these guys. When Tate talks about fitness, it's like, we don't think, okay, his, his niche is fitness. We watch him just because it's like, it's him as a person. So there's a new phrase, which Dan Ko, he's a good YouTuber, he's been talking about. You would um, probably want to write that down. His YouTube channel would be really good for you. Dan Ko, K-O-E. He's got a bunch of videos where he explains this and he talks about like a new mindset to do with, um, with monetizing. He's very, very intelligent with this. And he says that you are the niche. You're the most profitable niche out there. Because if you try and constrain yourself to, let's say for me, if I constrain myself to just fitness, I might be at 500K subs right now, maybe. 
I opened it up. I do fitness, masculinity, dating, mental health, social, you know, everything, right, that I'm interested in. Now it's 2 million. Now the audience is massive because you generalize it so more people are uh, into it. But then also, like, you show your real self. You're not constraining yourself. So I think that maybe you've got slightly, like, an outdated mindset for YouTube. If you just try and pursue a niche these days, it, it's, it's nowhere near as effective as just you being the niche itself. And so your channel becomes like interests.